Hi, I'm Brandon Zahand, a Senior Gaming Accessibility Program Manager at Microsoft. I'm a member of the disability community and use he, him pronouns. I have 33 years experience working with the disability community and 20 years experience in the games industry. Additionally, I spent the last 16 years working to improve accessibility of video games and video game platforms. Today, we'll be going through some of the resources that the Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Team has put together to help game developers and publishers reach the approximately 429 million gamers in the world that have some form of disability. The resources we'll be discussing today are the Gaming Accessibility Fundamentals Learning Path, the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines, the Gaming and Disability Player Experience Guide, Accessibility Feature Tags, the Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Testing Service, and the Xbox Accessibility Insider League. Now, our hope is that by providing these resources, game developers will be able to not only expand their audience, but improve the experience for ga gamers with disabilities as well, reducing dissatisfaction and returns while increasing sales and review scores. In this talk, we'll walk through these in an ideal order in which they might be utilized, starting with the Gaming Accessibility Fundamentals Learning Path, which can be found at aka.ms forward slash game A11Y course. The Gaming Accessibility Fundamentals Learning Path was released at the end of 2021 in response to constant requests the Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Team was receiving from both members of the game industry as well as gamers with disabilities who were looking to grow or demonstrate their knowledge of foundational concepts related to inclusive game design. The free, platform agnostic, four hour long course is publicly available and broken into five distinct modules geared towards those who are just starting out on their accessibility journey. These modules include an introduction to gaming and disability, community collaboration for accessible design, gaming assistive technology, accessibility best practices for games and platforms, and accessibility best practices for hardware. Each module has a variety of content, including entertaining and informative videos, practical examples, quizzes, and more. The training, which currently has a 4.9 out of 5 star rating, also provides those who finish it successfully with a badge of completion, which can be shared with others via platforms, such as LinkedIn. On the left of this example, you can see the first unit of the training, Introduction to Gaming and Disability, and the seven modules that it consists of. The unit's rating, along with the average time needed to complete both the unit and each module, is also presented. On the right, you can see the beginning of one of these modules, along with introduction information and a still shot of one of the many videos included in the training course. Now, we encourage anyone in the game industry who has an interest in accessibility to go through this course. In addition to providing general foundational principles around accessibility, the learning in it will be useful when utilizing the next resource we'll be discussing, the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines, or ZAGs for short. Those can be found at aka.ms forward slash XAGS. The ZAGs are 23 sets of publicly available platform agnostic game accessibility best practices that have been developed in partnership with industry experts and members of the gaming and disability community. They were released in January of 2020 and revised one year later based on additional feedback and learnings from gamer developers and gamers with disability. Useful for beginners and experts alike, these guidelines are intended for designers as a catalyst for generating ideas, for developers as guardrails when developing their games, and for test teams as a checklist to validate the accessibility of their titles. The ZAGs aren't intended to act as a checklist to validate any type of compliance or legal requirements. Rather, they seek to ensure that the user experience in a game is enjoyable and playable for everyone. The ZAGs include a variety of helpful tools, including scoping questions to determine which guidelines might apply to your specific game, real-world examples of those best practices from well-known game developers, resources and tools for those looking to implement these best practices, and more. And as Microsoft grows our knowledge of accessible gaming from interactions with our gaming and disability community and other accessibility-driven game industry partners, we update our best practices with those learnings. In these screenshots, you will see a portion of ZAG 101, text display. The leftmost image also shows the navigation bar, which lists all 23 sets of guidelines. As you can see, there are a variety of information 
presented on these, including scoping questions, background and foundational information, applicable gamer personas, and more. Speaking of personas, to help developers better understand various groups of players with disabilities and how best practices like the Zags may benefit them, our next resource was designed to do just that. It is the Gaming and Disability Player Experience Guide, which can be found at aka.ms forward slash GADPEG. The Gaming and Disability Player Experience Guide is a 52-page supplemental resource to the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines. While the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines provide a prescriptive list of game accessibility best practices organized by game area, this resource organizes common barriers to gameplay and related best practice guidelines found in the Zags by type of disability. And like the Zags, it's a platform agnostic document and it's publicly available to developers. Released in 2021, this guide is intended to help game developers and designers with an intermediate to advanced understanding of accessibility gain a more holistic understanding of the barriers that players with certain types of disabilities may experience when game mechanics, video, audio, input, and other aspects of the game's design are not developed with these members of the gaming and disability community in mind. The information in this guide can be used during early planning and prioritization phases of game development to help scope accessibility goals and identify potential facilitators. It can also be used as a source of foundational knowledge to help developers prepare for conversations with the gaming and disability community. In this example from the guide, you can see a section on hearing and gaming. Barriers to gameplay for those who are deaf or hard of hearing are demonstrated on the left as well as facilitators that can be included to mitigate such barriers. On the right, detailed information on these is provided, as well as links out to relevant Xbox accessibility guidelines. At this point in an accessibility journey with these resources, developers should have a better understanding of the fundamentals of gaming accessibility, different types of assistive features and designs, and the various groups of gamers and disabilities they can help. By this time, game developers will likely be trying to determine what aspects of accessibility they should start with. Our next resource, Accessibility Feature Tags, can help you with just that. Information on these can be found at aka.ms forward slash AFTS. Accessibility Feature Tags are one of our newest resources. Since November of 2021, Xbox developers and publishers have been given the ability to surface common accessibility features in their games by using a new accessibility section in the Microsoft Partner Center Gaming Metadata Module. The purpose of this functionality is to provide additional ways for game developers to surface content that was designed with accessibility in mind to gamers with disabilities. Based on in-depth research with the gaming and disability community and game developers, 20 features can be tagged so long as specific criteria for each tag is met. This criteria is designed to ensure the features implemented are both high quality and consistent, so gamers can rely on them when making decisions whether or not to purchase content or not. Additionally, to ensure accuracy of the applied tags, Microsoft validates information after it has been published. Should any discrepancies be found, publishers are notified and asked to correct their tagging. Also, we understand that these 20 tags only cover a fraction of all the possible accessibility features and functionality a game might have. That's why we now provide an ability for game developers to list a URL to an accessibility-specific page for their games. This URL can be launched directly from the Xbox Store, as well as the Xbox.com website, among others. And it's a fantastic way for developers to communicate all the incredible accessibility work they're doing in their titles. While accessibility feature tags currently show up in a number of storefronts, including the Mobile Game Pass app, Xbox PC app, and Xbox.com, let's take a minute to look at how tags are displayed in the Xbox Store. On this screen, you can see the Xbox Store homepage. We've added a new Accessibility Spotlight, which is designed to bring extra attention to games that have four or more accessibility feature tags. Titles in the spotlight are sorted first by the number of tags they have, followed by whether they have an accessibility URL, and then finally alphabetically. There are over 150 titles currently displayed in the accessibility spotlight. And as more titles get added to the list, the number of tags needed to be spotlighted will go up over time to reward developers who make deep investments in this space. 
Whether accessing a game with tags from the spotlight or from any other part of the store, gamers will now see how many feature tags a game has at the top of a game's product details page. This can help gamers determine whether they would like to explore the product further. If so, they can scroll down to the details section of the page. You'll see we now have an accessibility details pane that provides a quick breakdown of the categories of feature tags, gameplay, audio, visual, and input. Users can click into this details pane to find additional links to the specific tags each game has, as well as a page that defines what each tag means and a link to the game's individual accessibility page if it has one. In this case, you can see that a Sea of Thieves had seven tags, and by clicking on the input category, we are able to dive in even further. You can see here that the game has full keyboard support, no button holds, single stick gameplay, and text-to-speech, speech-to-text communication. Now, even if you're not shipping on Xbox, we'd highly encourage you to look through the online documentation for these tags, as our research shows that these 20 accessibility features are some of the most commonly sought by the disability community, and our criteria for each tag can help you ensure you implement those features in a highly impactful way. Once you have chosen any of these features you want, along with any other inclusive design or accessibility considerations, development will begin. And at some point during the development process, you'll reach a point where you want to see if the work you've put in will truly benefit gamers with disabilities. Our next resource, the Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Testing Service, also known as MGATS, can assist with that. Information on this service can be found at aka.ms forward slash MGATS. The Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Testing Service is an optional paid testing service for Xbox and PC games that was created about a year ago based on requests from third-party developers asking the gaming accessibility team here at Microsoft to review their content and provide feedback. In the spirit of the community's nothing about us without us mantra, the program tests games using a combination of accessibility subject matter experts and gamers with disabilities. Games are tested against the Xbox accessibility guidelines using the same secure and confidential testing procedures that Xbox certification uses to test pre-release titles. About seven days after submission, a report is generated by the team that covers five key areas. Game accessibility highlights, showing what the game is already doing well. Concerns that indicate areas where the game fails to meet Xbox accessibility guidelines. Freeform gaming and disability community feedback from our gamers with disabilities. And a list of all the accessible feature tags that the game qualifies for and which ones they could qualify for with minor tweaks. We also include over two pages of various accessibility resources to help devs make their products more accessible. Once the report is received, every developer can review the report with a subject matter expert from the Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Team to answer any questions or concerns about the information within it. Now, the Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Testing Service is just one of many ways you can get feedback from the gaming and disability community. As community engagement is important both before and after a title releases, Microsoft has created the Xbox Accessibility Insider League, otherwise known as Zale to give game developers another method of soliciting feedback from gamers with disabilities. Information on the program can be found at aka.ms forward slash zale for devs. The Xbox Accessibility Insider League is a flighting program that is available on both Xbox and PC. It provides over 100,000 users who rely on accessibility features in games, as well as those who are simply passionate about inclusive gaming, to provide feedback on the accessibility of specific titles after they have launched or during open betas. Users opt into Zale through an Xbox Exciter Hub, which utilizes the Xbox Insider Hub to surface experiences and provide feedback collection mechanisms. Our team has pre-made accessibility surveys that game devs can utilize as part of their feedback collection process, or developers can choose to point users to surveys on their own platforms. Any game developer who wishes to utilize Zale should reach out to their Microsoft Publishing Partner Manager. And we highly encourage developers who are passionate about accessibility to join the program as users themselves. Once you've joined, you'll be able to see and take part in various flighted gaming and platform experiences and provide your own feedback on those expectations. In summary, 
Today, we've covered six of the gaming accessibility resources Microsoft has created to help game developers and publishers make their products more delightful for gamers with disabilities. The Gaming Accessibility Fundamentals Learning Path is a fantastic place for those who are new to game accessibility to learn and demonstrate foundational concepts related to gaming and disability. The Xbox Accessibility Guidelines can then be used to explore various accessibility features and design choices that can be included in a game to make the product enjoyable for gamers with disabilities. And the Gaming and Disability Player Experience Guide can be used in conjunction with the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines to gain a more holistic view of how various types of disabilities can benefit from specific types of facilitators. When trying to determine where to begin, the accessibility feature tags give game developers a great place to start when providing the added benefit of making accessible games more easily discoverable by the gaming and disability community. The Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Testing Service can then be utilized to help validate that the work you put in has resulted in a product that is as accessible as you want it to be. And finally, once your game has shipped, the Xbox Accessibility Insider League can help you procure disability community feedback to consider implementing as part of updates to your product or to take forward into future products. On behalf of the entire gaming accessibility team here at Microsoft, we hope you find these six resources useful as you endeavor to make your games more inclusive of gamers with disabilities. Should you have missed any of the links earlier, we have you covered. You can visit aka.ms forward slash XGA which includes links to each of these resources as well as others. And should you have any questions about any of the materials presented today or anything else related to gaming accessibility, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at xaccess at microsoft.com. Thank you so much.